Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome to a sunny succulent Sunday. Today I'm going to be working on some succulents that I got last year and I'm going to be repotting them into bonsai soil, maybe pruning them, getting them on track for the summer. Not only is it succulent Sunday today, but it's also seedy Sunday today, the first gardening event of the year where there's seed exchanges, there's guests come in and do lectures, and there's booths set up where they're selling things and books and all the clubs are there, the horticultural societies, and it's very exciting, the first gardening event of the year. So I sat through the three lectures, the three guest speakers. It was really interesting. There was native, the importance of native plants, trees, and shrubs. The second speaker was on worm composting, and the third speaker was planning, planning edible landscapes, uh, which was very exciting too. Very similar to what we're doing in our community orchard and gardens. I am really enjoying the succulent bonsai, and I got some more last year. Succulent Sundays will become a thing again uh, as the weather improves. There's not much I can do with the succulents over the winter, so both uh, Ficus Friday and Succulent Sundays will be returning to the channel. Maybe not every week, but eventually they will. I'm going to go inside now and get some of the succulents I'll be working on today. Most of them will be euphorbias. Um, they tend to grow with like a, a woody trunk and a branch structure, so they're, they're really good for bonsai. I have two crown of thorns uh, on the go, and I have a new euphorbia that I bought last year, the one that's called Killer. Uh, so I'll be repotting that today. And if I find any other succulents in the plant room that I purchased over last summer that haven't been repotted into bonsai soil, I'll be working on those today also. Today is sunny outside, but it's just a couple of degrees above freezing, so I'll have to put a plastic bag around the succulents and bring them out to the greenhouse here. In the greenhouse here, it's about 15 degrees Celsius, quite warm, even though I have the heat turned down because it is a sunny day. Here are the two plants that I'll be working on today. So let me get them out. And you've seen both of them on the channel um, before, but I haven't done any work to them yet other than letting them grow. So here's one and here's my other. So here they are. So one is the Euphorbia. It's a Euphorbia Wake Fieldii, nicknamed Killer. And it was quite expensive. It was $29.99. They had a lot of different sizes for sale in the greenhouse. Some, you know, quite large ones that were over $100. And I thought, well, no, I'll start off with the smallest one and just grow it into a larger one. It may take quite a few years, but, you know, these are fairly fast growers, so I think it'll do okay. The other plant is a succulent that I saw. The parent plant was in a greenhouse and it had a massive trunk on it, about this big around, and it was only about, uh, about the height of me. So it was a really meaty, thick-looking trunk on this tree. And they had used it for propagating, so there's many cuttings they took off of it. And you can see the leaves... They come out kind of a light beige tan color, reddish tan, and then the older leaves are more of a green color. So I, I think they definitely need a lot of light. These kind of leaves, they're not a dark green like this, so it would reflect a lot of light and heat away. So that's probably from a very arid, dry environment. But it's done really well in the plant room over the winter. It's probably doubled in height. Uh, since I first got it, so definitely a fast grower, and this one is also definitely a fast grower. So they are just in nursery uh, nursery soil at the moment. So today I'm going to repot them, and I may trim this one back. It's getting quite top heavy, so I'll probably cut it back in an effort to kind of thicken the trunk and get a bit of taper and movement to the trunk. I didn't publish a video yesterday. So before I get working on the succulent bonsai today, I'll show you what I did yesterday. We headed down to Toronto 
to attend a protest about developing the Greenbelt area here in Ontario. Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We are here at the Toronto Parliament buildings and uh, part of a protest against the government fighting for saving the Greenbelt. Hopefully we can help a bit to do that. So you can hear them saying save the Greenbelt. Here's Laura holding our signs. Hands off the green belt. We are back from the big protest of the development of the green belt. When I left this morning, it was very cold out. The greenhouse was just above freezing slightly inside, maybe half a degree above freezing. Some of the pots were frozen and it was a s kind of snowy leaving. When we got back now, it's full sunshine and it's warmed up above freezing. So I think my greenhouse is going to be really warm inside because I had the heat on still when I left. So let's go check out the greenhouse and see how it is. The greenhouse is in the sunshine. Oh my goodness, how warm is it inside is the question. Oh, feels pretty tropical in here. It is 26 degrees Celsius in here. Or let's see what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, it's about 84 degrees Fahrenheit in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the heat right off. That's off. I'm going to open the door. That'll cool things off a bit. Wow, is it warm in here. So because it's so warm in here, I can see that, you know, I need to do a bit of watering. Things are starting to dry out. Hopefully, now this morning, I felt this pot and it was like frozen on the surface. So I'm hoping that, you know, it takes a while for these pots to warm up. And my greenhouse hasn't been in the sun all day long. It's only in the afternoon. You can see it clears the tree here. So it's just come into the sunlight within the last probably hour or half hour. So I'm hoping that the pots are still cool. The soil in the pots. They do feel cool, like if you put your hand on them, definitely cooler than the air temperature, that's for sure. But still, you know, not desirable having it this warm in here. However, maybe with the door open, the heat off, the fan on, it'll cool down in here to a reasonable temperature fairly quickly. Although, <laughs> there's no sign of cooling off yet. If anything, it's going up in temperature still. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, the sun's getting pretty strong in the sky. 
which is good to see. Yeah, it's not cooling down in here at all. I guess with the sun shining in through the glass here, I can just feel it in here. It's, it feels very, <laughs> very nice. Oh well, doors open, heat's off, fan's on, that's all I can do. Solar power fan in there is really worrying away too. You can see my solar panel over here, right up top there. That gives me the, that powers the solar fan. Here's my outside thermometer sensor. Just hanging, goes out the vent in the roof there to outside. Gives me the outside temperature. In the plant room here, I turned the heat off when I got home. It is also 28.7 degrees Celsius in the plant room. Very warm and tropical in there too. Yeah, so that's a little hotter than I like. Also, I try and keep it at nighttime between 16 degrees Celsius and in the daytime the highest I like it to get up to is about 22 degrees Celsius but yeah it won't hurt anything going up high to 28 but it just means I'm going to have to do a lot of watering tonight I'm going to head inside get something to eat and hopefully I'll have time to work on a tree this afternoon that was a look at my day off on Saturday so now let's begin work on the trees. And I think I'll start with my Euphorbia, my killer tree. The parent plant of this tree was also very large. It was right up to the roof of the greenhouse. So I was really happy to get a cutting of it because it kind of inspired me, this tree form succulent, to create a bonsai version. Before I get the Euphorbia out of the pot, I need to pick a pot to put it in. I don't want it in this plastic pot because plastic pots don't breathe. A nice kind of porous clay pot like a terracotta pot or something sucks out the excess water from the soil, evaporates it into the air. So it's really good for a succulent to have a low fired clay pot. So a, like a terracotta pot or a, a clay pot that uh, isn't moisture proof, like it's not like porcelain or the high fired clay pots which don't absorb water at all. So I'm going to look for a pot to put this in and it doesn't have to be a decorative pot like a terracotta pot if I can find one the right size in the middle of winter here will do just fine. I searched around and I do have like a terracotta bonsai pot very porous but because it's shallow it's not going to drain very well. Uh, these taller pots have a bigger water column so in the summer you can water a succulent in a tall terracotta pot like this probably two to three times the amount you could in a, a shallow terracotta pot. This would hold all its moisture in the bottom. So these are really good for developing uh, succulent trees. The terracotta wicks away all the excess moisture from your soil the tall water column ensures really good drainage. So when a tree's planted in something like this or a succulent, uh, you can water and fertilize very heavily uh, because it, the water won't sit in the pot. It drains away and it's really good for developing a succulent bonsai. So that's the reason I'm going to plant these two trees in these two tall terracotta pots. I've got my pot all picked out for this euphorbia. Now, generally, what I found on Euphorbia is, is that the root system is very tough and wiry, and most succulent uh, trees have a fairly tough, wiry root system. You would think, you know, if I pull this out of the pot, that the root system would be fine and delicate. But I find on most Euphorbias that it's very tough, and you can comb the roots out just like, you know, you would on a maple or a larch or any tree. So I'll get out the root rake and I'll start working on the roots. These serving trays are excellent for doing your root work on. You can comb out the roots, take the tray outside and put it in the, all the soil in the composter. And you can get these at any, you know, thrift store. So here I go. I'm going to start raking away the soil 
you can see the soil has you know held too much water in it I'm sure the roots don't like all that moisture I'm going to grab it by here now these do have thorns on them but I'm being careful so in here I can see a bit of foam and that's where they it's like a horticultural foam where they start cuttings in so it's all gone and you can see my root system doesn't look very happy it's been sitting in this kind of moist garden soil or potting soil and you can see there's not a lot of root growth it's just barely been hanging in there so after I get it in bonsai soil I think you'll see the growth rate and the health of this tree increase dramatically I think it'll be I think this will be the summer where it'll really take off and grow I haven't pruned this tree so far so at the moment it's fairly top heavy compared to the root system underneath so there's my root system it's pretty meager and it doesn't look the healthiest it looks like they're kind of waterlogged I'll clean up now putting all this potting soil out in the compost and then we'll come back and plant my euphorbia I'm going to be planting my euphorbia in bonsai soil from the bonsai supply you can get this soil online from the Home Depot or you can order it directly from their website so I have two soils I have their regular soil and then I have their shohin mix actually I don't have very much of that at all which I'll just use as a top dressing so here I go with the repotting I'm going to need a drainage screen in the bottom of the pot so I'll just cut off a piece to fit in the bottom here sort of uh, I guess this size will do it doesn't have to be round yeah just like that and then I can add a, a layer of soil I'll probably plant the tree up fairly close to the top so I'll need to fill the pot with about that much soil so let me get the bag open It has a Ziploc top so I can pour some out and then reseal the bag. So in goes the soil, filling it up to about there. So that's how full the pot is. Then I can get my euphorbia. So it's quite top heavy, this plant. So I'll have to place some rocks around it that support the tree in the pot until the root system's grown down and kind of established itself then I can remove the rocks from the top of the soil so I do need to comb the roots out try and get them in the pot in a radial pattern as radial as I can get and they are fairly radial all the surface roots I'm just trying to arrange them to kind of create you know some nice looking surface roots which can eventually get exposed as the tree and the surface roots mature okay I think that's in the pot quite well so now I'll add some more bonsai soil like that and I'll work it in filling all those spaces around the roots with this very coarse soil and you can see the soil is very coarse so that is another reason I can water and fertilize this quite heavily over the summer because it's a very very free draining soil now the particles in the soil there's lava rock and pumice they do hold moisture in the particles but the roots are never sitting in wet soil there's always air spaces around them so they're getting all kinds of oxygen so it's really you know for these succulents you couldn't get a better soil than uh, you know this large particle sized soil that holds both you know air and water in the soil perfect for root growth so you can see the tree is staying up by itself so I just need a little more soil around it and I'm going to use my spoon for that 
All right, I'll spoon out the soil. I have a larger spoon, but I'm not quite sure where it is at the moment. Probably misplaced. So any bonsai soil mix works well with the succulents. It's better than, you know, those cactus mixes you can buy there. I find they're, they're too fine. They don't have enough air spaces and they don't drain as well. So I think you're going to see this euphorbia really grow well this year in this soil, in this pot. I think it's really going to take off which is good. That's why I have a fairly large pot here also. It's not, you know, a little tiny pot because I do want to grow this a little larger. I'm sure someday it'll probably become a fairly large bonsai. Okay, so that is planted. Now, I haven't I haven't root pruned it at all. So there's no cuts on the root, so I could water this right now and I will because this soil is very very dry. So I'm going to give it a thorough watering and then I'll put it back in the plant room, back in the sun and under the grow lights and it should do quite well. In spring I can bring it directly from the plant room out here to the greenhouse and then eventually transition it to the full sun outdoors. Here's a list of the ingredients on this soil from the bonsai supply. Pumice, calcinine clay, lava rock and pine bark fines. So yeah, a perfect bonsai soil. All right, here I go with its first watering in the new soil. Very exciting. I'll just water until it starts flowing out the bottom, which it is already. There we go. And I find with brand new soil like this, it takes several waterings before, you know, the water has absorbed into the lava rock. The first watering, it kind of just wets it. You let it soak in a bit, then you give it some more water. Let that soak in a bit. And you'll find that the first day or two with new soil, it's going to absorb a lot more water than it normally does until it kind of stabilizes and then it behaves a little differently. So brand new soil will dry out more quickly than a tree planted in soil that's already got moisture in the soil. My euphorbia is standing upright by itself, but I want to place some rocks around the tree just so it's a little more stable in the pot until those roots kind of start growing. So I'll look around for some rocks now and put them on the surface of the soil. I have a selection of rocks. I had to steal them off my Mars Project aloe because all my rocks are outside and they're stone cold. So these are nice and warm. They're from the basement and they'll do fine. So let's get them on top of the soil here. Before I put the rocks on the surface of the soil, I just want to talk about wiring trees in pots. Um, I get a lot of criticism about me not wiring my trees in the pots and there's a lot of people that think it's very unprofessional and that I'm stupid that I don't wire my trees in the pot and that there's I'm lazy, that I'm skipping a step that's important to bonsai and they can't understand why I don't wire my trees in the pots. And I've explained before but uh, I'll explain it again. Uh, the reason I don't wire my trees in the pots, one of the reasons, is that imagine your tree wired in the pot and then over the next three or four years between pottings, the tree rises out of the pot. It generates roots which lifts the tree out of the pot. So if your root is wired in the pot and the tree is lifting itself out of the pot, you can imagine what that wire is doing to your root. That it's digging in, it's leaving this wire mark on your root. And if it's in a place that will never be seen, that's fine, but generally they're not. They're across the surface roots. Even if they're protected with rubber, they still leave a mark. And I hate that on a bonsai. I, I hate when you have these beautiful flowing surface roots and then you see these lines across it where a wire has scarred the surface root 
And I see it on so many trees, especially older trees where they kind of raise the root base out of the soil, exposing those roots and the wire marks. It, it's one of those things that, um, to me, it kind of spoils the root base. And it may not bother some people. It's like wire marks on your branches. To me, it takes you out of that illusion that it's a miniaturized tree. It reminds you that someone has worked on this tree, that it's not natural. And it really takes me out of that bonsai zone where you're... It's, a bonsai should look magical, that it's just a tree that's kind of being miniaturized or shrunk down. Not, it shouldn't have clues on it that remind you of the real world where people are trimming and pruning and working on trees, wiring them, wiring them into the pots. It should take you out of reality and into a fantasy world. And any wire marks take you back into reality. It takes you out of the illusion of bonsai, in my opinion. That is one reason I don't wire my trees in pots. Now, there is the danger that a raccoon could climb up on your bench and dig up your tree and leave it lying on the ground. Um, it very rarely happens. I, I've had one tree that I had newly planted and a squirrel came in and dug the tree up and it was lying on the ground. Now I caught it in time, the tree did fine, but there is a possibility if you're away at work all day and uh, in the morning something dug a tree up, it could be lying on the ground. And that usually only applies to newly potted trees. You'll find that the root system quickly establishes itself in a pot and you've seen how hard some trees are to get out of the pots. Uh, once those roots kind of get established in the pots, which happens very quickly, the tree is almost impossible to get out of the pot. You're not going to knock it out of the pot. The wind isn't going to blow it out of the pot or anything like that. So, uh, you know, once you've got over those first, that first month after repotting, generally the tree is rock solid in the pot and you can remove the stones from the surface of the soil and you have a normal bonsai. Um, I, some other reasons why I don't wire my trees in the pot is that I find after repotting, if you've wired your tree in the pot, it's kind of fixed in that position. You can't make subtle rotational adjustments. You can't make subtle angular adjustments. You can't move the tree fore and aft in the pot. It's kind of locked in there and it's fine if you leave the wires free, you position your tree very accurately, then you wire the tree into the pot. But People don't do that because the wire shows on the surface. They generally wire the tree in the pot, clamp it in place with the wires, and then backfill it with soil so you don't see the wires covering the roots. So it allows me a little more freedom to accurately position the tree in the pot. That's my second reason why I don't wire the trees in the pots. I'm trying to think if there's another reason I don't do it. I guess it's just something I find that is just unnecessarily. Uh, that I mean, I've been growing bonsai for 30 years and I don't wire my trees in the pots. And I had that one tree that a squirrel dug out of the pot. Other than that, out of my 278 trees, I've never had an accident with a tree coming out of a pot, whether due to wind or animals or anything. So. Maybe I'm just lucky, um, but I think it's a sound practice not to wire your trees in the pot. I don't think it's going to cause you any problems if you take care of the tree. Uh, you put rocks on the surface to hold it in the pot until the root system has grown. All right, I'm ready to place the rocks on top of the soil. There is another reason I use rocks, and I forgot to mention it, is that it stops surface evaporation of the soil. So when I place stones, on the surface of the soil like that, it's like um, when the wind blows across the soil you don't get the evaporation and it really helps with a newly potted tree to keep the moisture in the soil so it doesn't dry out on hot days. It's just really really good for the tree. Now a lot of people put a layer of sphagnum moss on top or uh, they can cover it with tin foil or 
there's a lot of methods you can use, but the rocks kind of serve a double purpose. Okay, so I think that's really secure in the pot. Yeah, they serve a double purpose. They hold the tree in the pot, they stabilize the tree, and they stop the surface evaporation of this bonsai soil. That whirring noise you hear in the background is the solar-powered fan. When the sun comes out, that fan just spools up like a jet engine, circulates the air in the greenhouse here. I can feel the air circulating. It's really nice. So they work fantastic. That was sent to me by Tom from the YouTube channel, Grow and Clip Bonsai for Seniors. So thanks, Tom. The solar-powered fan is working excellent. My euphorbia is repotted, so I'll set that aside. And the next plant I'll work on is my unknown succulent here. I, I, um, this plant reminds me, uh, if you've ever seen The Little Shop of Horrors, it reminds me of Audrey from that uh, movie. It has those cup-shaped leaves. So I think I'll call this Audrey because I don't know what plant it is or what species it is, but I think Audrey is a good name and it, it grows quite quickly. So it's kind of fitting for that name, Audrey. All right, I'm ready to get the tree or plant out of the pot. We'll see what kind of root system this has. It'll be interesting. It's definitely sort of stuck in there. Here it comes. There I go. So let me start combing out the root system. Here I go. Let's see what's happening here. The soil is crumbling away from the surface. It's very wet, even though I haven't watered this for quite a while. So again, I think this plant will definitely benefit from having bonsai soil around it. And I have no idea what the root system would be like on this plant. So I'm just kind of teasing away the soil carefully with the end of my root rake. I'm uh, destroying all the lower leaves on this plant. They're very fragile, ready to come off. I might as well take them off now. And I will be pruning this back. Now on the other tree, I didn't have to wash the root system at all because there is very, very little of the original soil remaining. This one, I might have to. It, it's The soil is sticking to the roots a little more than my euphorbia it was. Uh, and this is good. I mean, it has fine roots, which is awesome. And I won't be doing a lot of root pruning on this tree or plant at the moment because I have no idea how it's going to react to root pruning. You know, I would think most plants you get from a nursery have are fairly tough or they don't sell them. You know, they can be handle repotting and all that. So, generally. That's why you never see baobabs in a nursery because they're very, very fussy on root pruning and repotting. And Okay, so I think that's looking good. I think that's a good looking root system. Now, do I need to prune it? Well, I don't think I do at this point in time. I'm going to let it grow in bonsai soil. Hopefully, I'll get a really fibrous root system. Then I can start the root pruning. But at the moment, I don't think I need to do any. I think it's, it's looking good. There's a lot of good radial roots here. Now, it does have a tap root, but that's fine for now. It's going in a tall pot. So I'll clean up again, and then we'll get to planting this unknown plant. Here is my pot that Audrey is going to be planted in. So again, I'll cut a drainage screen for the bottom. Oh, that's another thing, wiring your drainage screens in the bottom of the pot. There are times, you know, if you've got a forest planting and you're shifting trees around, that your drainage screens are going to slide out of position. But a pot like this, where I've got a, a drainage screen in the bottom, it's never going to move. There's no point wiring your drainage screen in the bottom of the pot. Uh, again, I will get criticized for not wiring my drainage screens in the bottom of the pot, but I've never had one jump out of the pot yet. So, 
All right, I'm going, putting a, a base layer of soil in the pot. Okay, so the tree is going in the pot now. Now I think, I'll try putting it in. I, maybe I filled it a little too much, but uh, we'll see. So the soil is going in really well here. I'm getting it around the root system. I can feel the plant getting more stable in the pot. Now I've got to, will it stay upright? No, it won't stay upright yet. I'm using my hand as a soil scoop here. <laughs> So this uh, soil from the bonsai supply, because you know it's got lava rock in it and pumice, it's fairly heavy and it holds the trees in the pot really well. If this was my soil mixture of you know safety zorb and perlite, I don't think this top heavy plant would stay upright in the pot. It would rely on the rocks more, that's for sure. So I would say the bonsai supply soil is definitely a superior soil to the mix, the general mix I use, but, but, you know, you also have to pay for it and it's more expensive. So my general soil mix works well, that's for sure. And okay, so that's upright by itself. So I'll get my spoon now and top that off. Yeah, so I would say, you know, if you can afford a good quality bonsai soil, I definitely go for it. If I had a handful of trees, I would definitely be buying, you know, really good quality bonsai soil. But because I have so many trees, I couldn't afford it. I would be broke. So that is the reason I don't use it all the time. It's just great stuff, but you know, it's expensive to buy. And the ingredients are expensive to put together too. It's not it's not a rip-off or anything. It, it's good good value for your money. It's just when you have so many trees, you've got to find the very cheapest of everything. And, you know, maybe I will transition my better quality trees into better quality soil as they develop into the future. Maybe. Okay, so that's sitting there quite nicely. Again, I haven't pruned the roots on this tree, so I'm going to give it a thorough watering. All right, here I go with the water. Okay, that should be good. So the only disadvantage of these terracotta pots is they don't have feet on the bottom. So they need to be on a bench where the water can drain out the bottom. If it's on a surface that's flat and slick, the water will just fill up in the pot. Which can also be useful if you want to do a thorough watering. You can put your hand over the hole in the bottom like that. You can water the tree and it will fill, I won't do it, but it'll fill the entire pot with water. Then you just let your finger go and it drains out the bottom. So you can really ensure that it gets thoroughly watered. Okay, Audrey, you are in your new pot. So I'll clean up and we'll come back and I'm going to do some pruning. All right, I'm going to place the stones on the surface of the soil here now. Again, holding the plant in the pot and stopping that surface evaporation from the soil. And these stones don't stop you watering the tree. The water just flows around it. It's just like a, almost like a coarse gravel on top. So there, the tree is held in the pot quite nicely. So now I'm going to give it a prune. I'm going to begin the pruning on Audrey here. Now, the reason I'm pruning this plant is that I don't want it to grow too tall and spindly. Otherwise, it's going to flop around in the wind and it could break. So 
I'm going to keep it fairly compact, kind of build up my trunk slowly to get a nice woody trunk and make it kind of a, a short, robust tree. So I'm not going to do a lot of pruning on top. I'm just going to prune the very tip off. So here I go, right here, like that. Should I plant that as a cutting? Probably. Just give that a watering. And with luck, that will root and grow. So I'll be giving this one away. I'm not going to keep it, but might as well propagate the cutting. What a super sunny succulent Sunday it's been. I got my two succulents potted up, ready to grow for the summer, and I think they'll grow really, really well. So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.